you have any information pertaining to this case, you are urged to contact the Sumter County Sheriff's Office by telephone at 352-569-1600 or by email at jgalvin at sumtercountysheriff.org. Alternatively, you could contact the District 5 Medical Examiner by telephone at 352-326-5961 or by email at d5meo at mariancountyfl.org. On the 19th of February 1971, two teenage hitchhikers noticed a badly decomposed body floating in the Lake Panasofki, underneath the bridge on the Interstate 75 in Sumter County, Florida. Police were notified and the body was retrieved within the hour. An autopsy determined that the body belonged to a woman who had been dead for two to four weeks prior to being found. She was a victim of homicide, having been strangled to death with a man's belt, size 36, that was still wrapped around her neck. Authorities believe that she had been killed elsewhere and dumped off the bridge. She was of Southern European, most likely Greek, descent, and was between 17 and 25 years old at the time of her death. She stood between 5 feet and 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighed between 100 and 120 pounds, had long, straight, dark brown or black hair, and her eyes were probably brown, though this isn't certain. To correct instability in her right ankle, she underwent orthopaedic surgery, probably between the years of 1967 and 1970. The specific procedure she underwent is known as the Watson-Jones technique. It was determined that she had given birth to at least one child during her lifetime. She had periostitis, which is an inflammation of the connective tissue that surrounds a bone in her lower right leg that was in the process of healing. This would have caused her pain and she may have walked with a limp as a result. Harris lines were observed on her bones, indicating that she had experienced illness, physical trauma and or malnutrition in her early life that briefly stunted her growth. Ribs 1 and 3 had fractured perimortem, which suggested to law enforcement that her killer may have been kneeling on her torso as they strangled her. She had extensive dental work, including several gold caps, silver fillings, and a porcelain crown on one of her top middle teeth. She was found fully clad in a green and white shawl or poncho with a fringed border and a floral pattern, a thin gold necklace, a green shirt, a bra, a white gold 17 jewel lady's baler wristwatch which adorned her left wrist, a gold ring with a transparent stone which adorned her left ring finger, plaid green pants and a pair of nylon panties. She was barefoot. Again, the murder weapon, a size 36 men's belt, was found around her neck. The ring she wore suggests that she may have been married or engaged. After six months passed with nobody coming forward to identify the woman or her murderer, she was laid to rest in the Oak Grove Cemetery in Wildwood, Sumter County. Her grave is marked simply with Jane Doe, 1971. In 1986, her remains were exhumed and an anthropological examination was performed. In 2012, the detective assigned to her case took her remains to be examined by researchers at the Anthropology Department of the University of South Florida and researchers at the Geological Sciences Department of the University of Florida. Isotope testing performed on her hair and teeth revealed that the unidentified woman had been foreign to the US, only arriving in the country 12 to 2 months before her untimely death. She had spent the majority of her short life in southern Europe, and after studying the lead levels in her teeth, researchers managed to narrow down her likely place of birth to one place, Lavrio, Greece, a small mining town southeast of Athens. It is possible that she travelled to Florida to attend an Epiphany celebration. Epiphany is a Christian feast day celebrated in Greece. The traditional date on which Epiphany is celebrated is 6th of January. Little Miss Lake Panasofki was found on the 19th of February, a little less than a month and a half later, and she had been dead for at least two weeks. In Tarpon Springs, a city about 73 miles from Lake Panasofki, Epiphany is celebrated annually given the large Greek population. In November 2012, Little Miss Lake Panasofki's case was featured on the Greek crime show Light at the End of the Tunnel. 
A viewer called in and claimed that Little Miss Lake Panasovsky's facial approximation bore a striking resemblance to a girl she had gone to school with in 1969 or 1970 named Constantina, nicknamed Dina. This seems, as yet, to be the most promising lead. The caller recalled that Constantina was from Lavrio, much like Little Miss Lake Panasovsky, as indicated by her isotopes. The caller and Constantina had attended an all-girls boarding school in Kifisia together, where they were trained in home economics. After the course ended, the school sent their students to either Australia or the United States as part of a two-year contract. Constantina was sent to the US, whilst the caller was sent to Australia. Thus, they lost contact and never saw one another again. Constantina would have arrived in the US within the time frame that Little Miss Lake Panasovsky did, adding to the theory that they are one and the same. Constantina's surname is either unknown or has not been publicly released, though it's known that she had a brother named Stelios. Reportedly, she never talked about her parents, but seemed fond of her brother. Another viewer of the Greek crime show called in to say that in the 70s, he had a friend named Stelios from Lavrio, who had a sister who attended school in Kifisia before leaving for the United States. As of April 2020, there have, unfortunately, been no further updates about Constantina for a good few years. In my humble opinion, there's a good chance that Constantina could be Little Miss like Panasovsky given the evidence supporting this theory. Constantina's family have not yet come forward to confirm whether she is missing or not, which I find odd. What we do know is that Constantina has not yet been conclusively ruled out as a possible identity. Currently, there are absolutely no rule outs listed for Little Miss Lake Panasovsky on Namus. Of course, if any are added in the future, I shall list them in the description. Thank you to Nicole for suggesting that I cover this case. Might I add that I'm flattered by your use of the term mini documentary to refer to my videos. Again, if you believe you have any information that made in the identification of the decedent and or her killer, you are urged to contact the Sumter County Sheriff's Office by telephone at 352-569-1600 or by email at jgalvin at sumtercountysheriff.org. Alternatively, you could call the District 5 Medical Examiner on 352-326-5961 or email them at d5meo at marioncountyfl.org. Thank you very much for giving Little Miss Lake Panasovsky's case a moment of your day.